Have you ever had others around you hear your stomach growling? It may be embarrassing, but that's your digestive system working. That rumbling sound comes from stomach muscles and intestines contracting and squeezing when empty. Add food and you've got an amazing food processing factory. You see, the stomach is like a factory, controlled remotely from the brain with step-by-step -step processing that uses chemical treatments, mechanical movements, valves and sensors. Our digestive system breaks down food into usable components that are absorbed into the blood and carried around the body, providing us energy and building blocks to keep our body in working order. The role of the stomach is to transform the food we eat into a form where nutrients can be easily absorbed through the small intestine. When we smell or think about food, it is sort of like our brain switches on the machines in our stomach factory. From the moment food enters our mouth, it starts being processed by our teeth and our saliva. These are the first steps that prepare food to be sent to the stomach. The rumbling stomach sound gets muffled after the food bolus comes down our pipe-like esophagus and lands in our stomach. A sphincter acts like a valve between this pipe and reaction chamber, allowing the food to enter the stomach but preventing gastric juices from going up into the throat. After a large meal, coffee or alcohol, this valve can sometimes malfunction, causing heartburn, also known as acid reflux. In a day, cells that lie in the stomach can secrete 2 to 3 liters of gastric juice, which contains hydrochloric acid. Gastric acid has an acidity level similar to battery acid, a substance that can dissolve steel. Thankfully, the stomach is lined with a protective mucus coating that can withstand strong acids. This way, your stomach acid will dissolve your meal, but not the stomach lining. The stomach lining is also protected by special cells that produce bicarbonate, a base that neutralizes the acid and protects the stomach lining. Stomach acid helps break down food. For example, it breaks down the tough cell wall of plant-based foods. Proteins exposed to stomach acid unfold as their bonds are broken. The acid has two other important purposes. One is that it activates enzymes, special proteins that do the job snipping protein and fat molecules into smaller pieces. Stomach acid also destroys harmful microorganisms that you may accidentally ingest with your food. But there are some parts of the meal you are digesting that need to be protected and not broken down. For example, vitamin B12 is needed for the production of red blood cells and it needs to make it to the small intestine intact so it can get absorbed into the blood. Lack of B12 causes anemia because you don't have enough red blood cells to carry oxygen to your tissues. Thankfully, gastric juice contains a protective element called intrinsic factor that protects this vitamin from digestion. Now for the mechanical action. Mechanical force is provided by three layers of gastric smooth muscle. Stomach contractions called peristalsis mix the food and gastric juices like a washing machine and also move food towards the small intestine. At the end of the food's journey through the crescent-shaped stomach, the tapered part at the bottom called the pyloric canal acts as a sieve and pump. At this point, the digested food has become a semi-solid mixture called chyme that is secreted into the duodenum, which is the beginning of the small intestine. The gate between the stomach and the small intestine, called the pyloric sphincter, only allows food particles that are sufficiently small to pass. The pyloric sphincter also controls the rate at which gastric chyme is released into the small intestine. It takes about four to five hours for your stomach to completely empty, and foods do not necessarily leave the stomach in the same order in which they arrive. Some things we ingest are absorbed through the stomach directly into the bloodstream. Alcohol is partially absorbed in the stomach and some medications like aspirin are as well. The small intestine is where most nutrients are absorbed, passing into blood vessels to travel around the body. If you have ever had food poisoning, you know that your stomach contents don't always make it to the small intestine. As a safety mechanism, sensors in the brain are tripped if there are problems in the ingested material, such as toxins. This signals stomach muscles to move the contents in reverse, called retroperistalsis, tossing the whole batch. Vomiting, while unpleasant, can be life-saving. Eating too much can also result in vomiting, but this doesn't usually happen. Sometimes you feel like you've eaten so much you will explode. Don't worry, that won't happen either. This is because when you are full, stretching or distension of the stomach triggers receptors at the endings of the vagus nerve 
which sends messages to the brain to slow down or stop eating. How do competitive eaters, those gustatory athletes that enter hot dog eating contests, do it? They train to expand their stomach by practicing eating and drinking while ignoring the signals going from their stomach to their brain. Whereas a regular person can drink less than two liters of water in two minutes, in that amount of time, a competitive eater can guzzle 4.5 liters of water. The world record for hot dogs with buns included is 75 in 10 minutes, set in 2020. Okay, so you've had a great lunch and isn't it time for dinner? What does the stomach factory do in between meals? This is where housekeeping comes in. The migrating motor complex is a pattern of electromechanical activity where contractions in the gastrointestinal smooth muscle sweep through the length of the stomach and intestinal tract, cleansing it of residual undigested foodstuffs, mucus and bacteria. The contractions caused by the migrating motor complex make the growling sound that gets louder the more empty the stomach. This cleansing process will stop when food is ingested as the factory will kick into gear with a regular pattern of digestive churning. So how do we know so much about the stomach? One person we can thank is Alexis Saint-Martin, a French-Canadian trapper who in 1822 was shot while serving at what is now Michigan in the United States. His abdominal wall didn't completely seal and his doctor, William Beaumont, could see inside. Beaumont decided to analyze the gastric juice and he experimented with how slow or fast different foods were digested by attaching foods to a silk string and inserting and removing them through the stomach opening of Saint-Martin. The relationship was not ethical by today's standards as Saint-Martin lacked prospects for earning a living and Beaumont took advantage of this. Nowadays, with proper consent, it is possible to look inside the human stomach and study digestion using magnetic resonance imaging or MRI. Unlike Dr. Beaumont's experiments, MRI is non-invasive. Some researchers use models with simulated gastric juices to test that coatings on medications will withstand stomach acid and reach their destination in the small intestine and for determining how long it takes for medicines to be absorbed into the bloodstream. Digested material from the stomach is passed into the small intestine, a tube of seven meters or three and a half times the length of your body that is neatly folded inside your abdomen. The job of the small intestine is to absorb nutrients your body needs along its surface into the blood. The small intestine has many folds and finger-like projections, which increase the amount of surface available to absorb nutrients. In fact, if you were to flatten out all the folds and projections in the small intestine, the area would be the size of a tennis court. Next, digestion continues to the large intestine, which is called that because this tube has a larger diameter, but it has a length of 1.5 meters, much shorter than the small intestine. Here, water and salts are absorbed into the body. Also, friendly gut bacteria that live there feed on the fibers that so far have resisted being digested. In doing so, these gut bacteria release extra nutrients that we otherwise wouldn't be able to absorb. It's not just bacteria that live in our gut, but a whole ecosystem of microorganisms, including fungi and viruses. And the positive influence of this gut microbiota to our health are only beginning to be understood. Finally, what's left at the end of the journey through the digestive system is waste material that your body doesn't need. Nerves sense when that waste is ready to leave the digestive system, and you'll know that it's time to find the washroom. If you want to learn more about how the stomach works and how researchers are studying it, take a look at the resources below. Thanks for watching.